Uh, free speech says, Richard, our IDs only get brief moments in the sun by brave people such as you. Nick is having that moment. I don't agree with all his positions, but I support moving the ball forward for any of our IDs. What about you? I think he's thinking, of course, of Nick Fuentes here, uh, who is part of our uh, second subjects. I mean, we were about to talk about it, the CPAC stuff. What we've seen is Nick Fuentes going to CPAC being uh, rejected from the CPAC, many people being banned from this conservative organization. And so instead, they just hang out in town and they have their own Groyper meetings. And for wars, Jay Schrauer's, uh, Gavin McInnes, and Nick Fuentes cannot attend the CPAC. Yeah, I guess we can move into this. Uh, sorry, my room is becoming a little darker in here. The The light was coming through the windows earlier, so I didn't take out my artificial lighting which sometimes washes me out but now okay. the sun's setting so you'll just have to all deal right. with it it's all uh good. but yeah uh what were we talking about oh yes we were um, talking about nick fuentes. and nick fuentes uh yes. yes yeah i mean look i i have a lot to say about this um i would say the structurally speaking I, I don't think anything that's going on right now makes sense. And there, there, there has to be a dynamic that makes, gives our cause a raison d'etre. And the dynamic of hanging outside the ball game without being able to afford a ticket and kind of jumping over the wall to see if you could catch an image of, uh, of the, the play is not an interesting dynamic. There, there's no reason for us to exist. It, it raises too many questions, which is if you are actually just a normal conservative, which is what Ga I, I listened to just a little bit of the um, conservative file or national file, I guess is what it's called. Um, yes. Uh, gathering. And that had Alex Jones. I, I just kind of, you know, uh, went in and out of the video just to kind of get a taste of what was going on. And yeah, it was uh, Alex Jones just being Alex Jones. You know, I you know kind of gotta love the guy. He's a pop culture icon, uh, completely hilarious, and a expert at uh, dietary weight loss. Um, and uh, and then you know Gavin and Nick were kind of up there, and it it was like this: you won't call us good conservatives. They seem to get mad at being called white nationalist or alt right or whatever. Uh, not to mention white supremacists or neo-Nazi. They, they they don't like being called these names. And I, I guess I would ask the question, then what are you? Then why aren't you in CPAC right now? Is this all a big misunderstanding? I remember Gavin was saying, I just created this fun fraternity that was really silly uh, called the Proud Boys. Well, Gavin, uh, we have you on tape in Joe Rogan's podcast pretty much let's just be frank here pretty much calling for violence Absolutely. and not even self-defense violence it's just basically saying if you see someone who, i think he said some of the effect if you see someone who looks like Andy Fi, just go punch them well, you know doing things that no one else really did no no one else did something that kind of bald and vulgar uh but he did and so what are you? What is the point of your group if it's just a silly organization for dudes to go eat pizza at? Why are you being banned? And what is the point? Why would anyone want to join such a stupid organization? And the, the same goes for Fuentes. It's like, why don't they call you a good conservative and allow you to be at CPAC and so on? I don't know, Nick. Maybe it's because in your short life, you've actually said some things that are pretty good and based among lots of other things that have insanely annoyed me, but I'll leave those out for now. You've actually done some things that take balls. You've gone after Israel. You've talked about nationalism, real nationalism. You've gone there on the race issue. You've discussed the JQ. You've even done all the other kind of stuff that I guess I might, might not mention just so you don't get a, yes. a, 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 a YouTube strike. Um, but you've also done some things that are stupid. You've annoyed uh, almost everyone. You call people out and make 
you know, kind of vague threats or just weird kind of vague harassment on pretty much every stream you do. So you've made, you know, chalk it up to youth perhaps, but that's why you're being banned. It's those few times that you've actually done something that's good. So you should be happy that you're banned from that circus freak act going on at the aptly named Gaylord Hotel in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. And so this Actual constant the pleading, the pleading of, of saying, you know, like, why can't I be in there? Why can't I be a conservative? It's weak and stupid. Um, I, I did some similar things. And in, in, in 2014, we did a, um, a, uh, a kind of, I, th- I think I called it an unconference, which was kind of a little term floating around the time. And it was basically an informal conference at CPAC. We met up with some people there. We, we, you know, there's some donors. We ate dinner at the old Hickory Steakhouse and the Gaylord. It was, it was a lot of fun. Then in 2015, uh, we had a great event at the Reagan Center that was really the first event where I, I could say there was an alt-right brewing. Um, I, that was the first event that I've ever been to where I said, raise your hand if you're under the age of 40, and more than half of the crowd raised their hand. Raise your hand if you're under the age of 30, and probably a third of the crowd raised their hand. That was totally unknown previously. But previously, it was almost like, raise your hand if you're under 80. or something. You know? uh, I mean, it wasn't that bad. Uh, then we did another event that was a Trump event at the Reagan building in 2016 that that more or less coincided with CPAC. We generally skip CPAC and we had our own event. And it was this creation of something that was real, that was an alt-right in, in the true sense of the term. We weren't begging to be let in. We were say we were not saying, why don't you call us conservatives? We were saying fuck conservatives. And that gave our ideals, a raison d'etre for a movement. Clinging to this party of dorks who won't give you the time of day and who are going to actually probably make money by joining the conservative movement and will only get doxxed and ridiculed by joining your movement. That makes no sense. You are not doing anything. And I think at your best, you're trying to revive a dynamic from 2016, which no longer exists, which is that the mainstream conservatives were in opposition to Donald Trump, yet we as the alt-right were totally in on Donald Trump. And there was this fascinating reversal where the outsiders were the insiders and the insiders were the outsiders. That was amazing in 2015 and through, say, the first half of 2016. That dynamic no longer exists. It just doesn't. All of those people who bashed Donald Trump in 2015 and first half of 2016 are now literally whining, whining and dining with Donald Trump and his family right now. Donald Trump has been totally absorbed into mainstream conservatism. They've, they've taken on some of his vibe, you could say, or aesthetics or grotesqueness in some level. But in terms of policy and ideology, he has taken on their stuff. They have won. And just trying to like will into being this dynamic that no longer exists is just senseless, in my opinion. Uh, so I, you know, I hate to be this harsh, but I, I think you can kind of get at what I'm saying in the sense of the reason why people like Fuentes are banned is because in their in their short lives, they've actually done something good. And so that actually is a compliment towards them. But in terms of what they're doing now, it is utterly pointless. You're not the religious right. If you want to be hyper-religious and Catholic and talk about anal sex in America or whatever, they, they've got that covered. They, the, the religious right does that, and they're not taboo, and they're totally accepted, and they're well-funded. You want to be the Trump, we're, we're pro-Trump, and you're not. No, that's not true. They're all pro-Trump. They're, they're, they're more deeply connected with Trump than you are. If you want to be nationalist or whatever, yeah, they're using the N-word too. Uh, they're probably using the other N-word behind the scenes. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But, uh, but they're, they're using the nationalism word uh, frequently. So there's no reason for being for all of this stuff. You're just LARPing and you're clinging to something that hates you. It, it is pathetic at some level. And 
I, I don't know why anyone would want to have anything to do with it, but we'll see what happens. Absolutely. I think just like you, so much wasted attention, wasted intellectual effort, wasted time for what is really a, a demonstration of sucking behavior. Uh, but while these uh, personalities of the right wing, the, the, I don't know how outlight, I guess, I guess that is the proper term because that is what defines Gavin McInnes well, and that is what yeah. defines somehow maybe J. Owen Schroer. Now, one amazing thing is that it's not even just Which Nick Fuentes. Which just Fuentes. basically means you're incoherent. Like, it, yeah. on some level, it means that you're more mainstream, like Laura Loomer is kind of just a conservative Zionist, you know, type. But with Gavin, he's said publicly things that are far more extreme than anything I've said. But yeah. he's just so incoherent that you know he's not serious. So it's all it's all irony, bro. Is and kind public. of like Fuentes, you know, it's like it, being alt light just means that we don't know what you actually believe. And, you know, that seems like a pretty like long term bad strategy, you know, like just pretending like you don't believe what you believe. What does Scott Greer actually believe in? I, I actually thought that I knew, uh, but I don't know now. Uh, I I have no idea what he believes or what he's doing because things that he'll say now just are, are utterly contradictory towards the younger person that I knew. Uh, what does what what does Fuentes really be? What are his ideas outside of just being combative? I don't know. So yeah, being a, a America first nationalist or alt light, it just means that you're incomprehensible and and incoherent. That, that basically is what it means. And when I go there, people, you know, it's funny because I, I sometimes do get conf uh, uh, criticized for being a little too intellectual, or heady, or you know, contrarian or whatever. But people know what I stand for. When I was interviewed by Dinesh D'Souza, I actually explained my view on the metapolitics of rights. And people know who I am. Uh, the alt-light, they're, they're, they're too confused or it, it maybe in some cases drug-addled or dumb to actually express a real idea. And so they, they hide behind that as a kind of obscurity. And I, I find it utterly tedious at the end of the day.